And welcome everybody to this month's Connect with Remedy webinar. Uh, this month uh, we have a great topic on reconciliation engine. At this time, I'll go ahead and turn it over to our presenter, Gustavo Delgerbo. Gustavo, go ahead. Hey, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Gustavo and I'm from Argentina. Since joining BMC almost uh, nine years ago, I always worked on the integration of machine DB, focusing on data loading tools like AT integrator and the processing of the data later through normalization engine and reconciliation engine. So I had a wide experience on the field and I'm actively involved in improving the code base for the product market. So welcome everyone to the webinar for reconciliation engine best practices and troubleshooting. So today we'll cover the following, the key use cases of reconciliation engine and the architecture overview of the tool, some of the best practices in the configuration and the usage of the engine, how to troubleshoot the jobs, some of the common errors that we can find by using the logs, the most seen performance problems and what are the causes and we will explain how to fix and prevent them. And we're going to finish by reviewing the current state of the application, the latest fixes, and then move to the questions and answer session. So reconciliation is part of a bigger process, the process by which uh, multiple data sources are combined into a single and golden data set to create a current and accurate description of your business environment. So when multiple data providers load data into several data sets of BMC, HMC, and B, you need a reconciliation process to enable you to resolve the conflicts from the different data sources and create one complete and correct production data set for your applications to use. Your source data, which could be CSPs, spreadsheets, databases, are loaded into the BMC HMCMDB through the use of different input tools, like HM Integrator or the HVM to CMDB synchronization process. This data will be then placed in different data sets, depending on the source of the data. For example, the HVM data will be placed in the BMC HVM data set, and any custom data that you may have will be loaded, for example, through ATM integrator into a custom data set. This data can then be cleaned, improved by the use of the normalization engine, and since it came from different sources and each source has different strengths, the reconciliation engine will combine the strengths of all the data sources. It will resolve all the possible conflicts and merge this given CI which was represented in some or all of your source data sets into one single CI with a single set of enriched attributes in the production data set. And then finally, applications such as asset management, service request management, and others will use this accurate information located in this golden data set only, which represent a single view of consistent information about the current data models. It's a single repository of software and hardware in your, uh, in your environment. So what is reconciliation? Right? Reconciliation engine is a tool that lets us resolve conflicts in your data. So to achieve that, it will need to identify the class instances which are the same across two or more data sets. It, it does so by using identification rules and it will mark the same instances with the same reconciliation identification. It also merges the previously identified CIs from any source data set to the production or golden data set, which normally would be BMC asset. To merge these instances, it uses merge precedences. According to the precedences set up in the different data sets of the reconciliation engine, it will choose if an attribute needs to be overridden with the new data from the source or if we need to keep the data that is already there in the type. Additionally, you can use reconciliation for other activities. Some of them, for example, are purge, which is commonly used to remove data that is marked as deleted or what we call as soft deleted from the CMDB. 
And the compare activity will provide you with a report detailing all the differences for each CI, comparing the CI information between the source and the target data set. It's very useful to identify data discrepancies or possible change requests that you may need. The rest of the activities are mentioned in detail in the official documentation. So let's now view one of the important objectives of reconciliation, getting clean and good quality data into your golden data set. So reconciliation has two mechanisms to achieve that. It will create a single source of data. If you have multiple sources of data, a given CI may be represented differently in each data set. So you do not want to work with duplicate data. You want only one CI with the best information available. So reconciliation provides an identification activity that will recognize these, these CIs and mark them so that they are considered the same. And it will also help to complement data from different sources. So your sources may contain the same CI, but each source has different data, different attributes about that CI. So reconciliation will work to get all this data together into on one record. That's complementing the data from the different sources. You will also get to decide through the merge person's rules which data is more important depending on the source of the data. So combining these two capabilities of the reconciliation engine, you now have only one CI, which has the most current and comprehensive information from all your sources so that your applications can use. So in summary, reconciliation is a process that will read the information from the source data sets through identification and merge activities. It will get you clean, current, comprehensive data into the golden data set. If the reconciliation engine were not there, no golden data set, no BMC asset could exist. So what exactly are these data sets? The data set is like a drawer. You can put related files in the drawer together. So each source of data will put its file into a different drawer. You can also have a data set represent a snapshot of one particular source taken at different timestamps. They can also be used as staking areas. You could store your data in your data set temporarily, modify it, review it, and then use reconciliation engine to move it to the next stage. So why do we need this golden data set again? To avoid duplicating data, to have all the information in just one place, and to keep your applications working with correct and complete data. So for example, if I had a computer system represented in two data sets, but with different information in each source, my ITSM applications couldn't know which computer system to use or which one has more or better information. So let's now view an identification example. Before you can compare or merge different versions of an entity, you must determine that they indeed represent the same entity. You must identify each instance. So the identify activity accomplishes this by applying rules. You specify against instances of the same class in different data sets. So for example, a rule to identify computer system instances might specify that the name of the instances be equal. So when the rules find a match, both instances are tagged with the same reconciliation identity. An extra attribute that shows that they each represent the same item in their respective data sets. So in the example show, shown, we can see two CIs. One in the source data set, for example, ADDN, and the other one is in the target data set, which could be your golden data set, DMTS. So the identification rule here uses the, the name of the CIs to find a match. Since both CIs have the same name, the unique reconciliation identity from the target will be copied into the source, replacing the zero with the key that is found in the target data set. So, the reconciliation ID is unique in any given data set, and that uniqueness is enforced so that only one CI can exist in each data set with a given reconciliation identification key. So identification is highly important because only identifying instances in this step will be considered later for merging. So proper identification can only be achieved by proper identification rules. The reconciliation engine already comes with a wide set of default identification rules, 
which you should review and ensure that they apply to your environment. These rules normally apply to 8 to 9 percent of the use case. Identification is also valid for special cases. If you have more than one source data set, for example, then the mechanism above will apply to all the sources, potentially identifying the same entity in each and every source that you have. And finally, if the CI does not exist in the target data set, you can have the reconciliation engine also create and assign a unique ID to your source CI. This is, in fact, the only way to bring new data to your golden data set. So after identification is concluded, merge normally will take place. So in this scenario, we will merge data from three sources into a single CI in the target data set. So the same CI is represented in each of the data sets, and the data sets have overlapping data. Our first data set, ADPM, contains zero number with a value of 1 to x. It has already been identified, and as such, it has a reconciliation ID assigned. The second data set, SCCM, contains also zero number, but the value here is different. It's 1, 2, 3, 4. It also has the same reconciliation ID, indicating it is the same CMI, but represented in a different data. And finally, our third data set, legacy, contains information in, in a totally different field, has been lost. So we have a conflict here. We have serial number in, in two places. So how do we resolve this conflict? In this case, the ADDM data set, we know that it will have more accurate information on serial numbers. So the merge precedence rules that we define, it will, it will tell the reconciliation which data set is more reliable than the others for specific classes and specific attributes. The higher the value of this precedent, the higher the priority that this particular data set has over the others. So the fact that ADDM is a more trusted source of data for serial numbers is reflected there by assigning a value of 600 versus the SCTM value of 100. So the final result after merging the data is a single record in the BMC as a data set. The values from serial number came from ADM and the casting cost from, uh, came from the legacy uh, data set. So understanding the ins and outs of the merge process will sometimes help us determine the proper solution for other problems we may have, like data duplication or data management issues. It may be the case that we need to determine where the DCI came from. If we have multiple sources of data being merged by reconciliation, it is sometimes useful to know which source contributed to creating the CI and to the data contained in the CI attributes. So we are in a business that seeks data quality and often rely on data auditing to see when a change was made, by whom, when, why. In some cases, this may not be as clear as the change history captured by an audit. So let's suppose you have a CI in the MC asset with the market field set to yes. But you check, you check the source record in ADM and it's still set to no. In that case, you likely want to know what is making the change. You suspect that reconciliation activity may be the culprit. So you can find the proof by looking at the CI itself by looking into a field called attribute data source field, you can determine where each attribute came from. The field will contain a long string which represents the footprint, the footprint of the last time the data was merged to create DCI. So it will include the source, record, data set ID, and a list of the fields ID that won the precedence contest from that particular data set. So if you see BMC ADDM followed by a list of IDs, and in that list of IDs included the number of the field ID for mark as deleted, then you can assume that the field was updated during the last merge and that the value came from IDDM, ADDM. Regardless, it's a great tool to review the data. Sometimes by reviewing the data and the data source, it can lead to improvements in the merge rules so that the next time you run a merge job, it will bring data from the pro proper data source. 
So the reconciliation engine, as we said, comes with predefined out-of-the-box standard jobs. A standard job is nothing else than a reconciliation job with a standard identification and merge rules. It contains both an identify and a merge activity, but you can add more activities to the standard job if you need them. Standard jobs contain the base rules that cover around 80 to 90 percent of the cases and are a great starting point for any environment. So standard jobs also provide ease of administration. You have all the rules in one place. And in our personal experience, they fit most of the requirements in the field. So when deciding if you're going to use a standard job or not, remember that standard jobs are flexible and actually allow for customization. So is a change in the configuration enough to meet your requisites? Remember that many parameters in the job configuration can be changed. So you can change options like merge order, or even you can change or add a qualification to a standard job. By default, standard jobs are manually triggered, but you can customize them and set them on to run on schedule or to run continuously. You can add more activities like purge or compare or delete. Finally, if the identification rules or the merge rules are not appropriate or not good enough, maybe you can resolve the problem with a change to the standard rules. So if you have a custom class added to the CDM, you could easily add the new class to the identify and precedent standard rules and still continue to use the standard job configuration. If you have a data set, that needs to have different identity or presence rules first. Always try to see if you can modify the standard identify or merge rules without affecting the existing jobs. If you cannot, then you may have to create a custom job and use custom identify and merge rules. So remember that the standard rules are used by all the standard jobs. So any change you make on the standard rules may impact more than one job. So consider that when, when you're making the changes. So let's talk about one of the main concerns of the reconciled data, duplicate. So duplicates are and has always been a problem when identifying merging data using reconciliation. Now, the term duplicate can mean different things to different people or different environments. So while working a duplicate issue, I always start by asking, what is a duplicate for me? So sometimes the answer is not immediately evident. One may know that two CIs represent the same computer, for example, but why? Right? What makes these two computers unique? So the answer, most of the time, can be obtained by looking into the data itself, the CIs, as well as the identification rules. So for example, you may have two computer systems with the same name or even with the same serial number. A very common problem in ADDM is when a computer goes offline for a given period of time. ADDM may rediscover the existing computer, but given that the computer already aged, it was removed from the ADDM database and a new one is created. So this new computer in ADDM is reflected also as a new computer in CMDB. But is it really a new computer? So the answer is yes. In ADDM data set, this is a new computer. But in your asset data set, this computer should reconcile to the same computer that was already there. So reconciliation process through a proper configuration of the CMDB will help the data move through this process. In a case like this, the duplicate that you have is in fact a desired effect that can be controlled. Nonetheless, there are some times when things go out of control because of manual intervention, improper rule configuration, and wrong data migration, or other reasons, you may end up with data that is duplicated, and you may want to remove that data somehow. So for some cases, a set of SQL queries can help you determine the duplicated amount of data in your system, as well as mark the data for manual or automated deletion afterwards. In this slide, we can, we can see a sample query that will show any number of TIs that share the same reconciliation identity as well as the same data set ID. This is something that we do not longer allow in the current version of reconciliation engine. We have incorporated uh, checks inside the CMDB engine that stop this from happening. But 
if you're coming from a legacy version or all data in your system, you may have run into this case. So even some load mechanisms as well can can produce this or bad data manipulation from the database. It can produce this scenario. So this SQL is just a sample. It can be altered to identify other type of duplicates which make more sense to your particular environment. For example, instead of reconciliation identity, you can use ADDM integration ID uh, to identify CIs and relationships that were created as duplicates by the ADDM to seem to be synchronization process. Or you could use the same query for identification of computers that share like serial numbers or host names even. So now that we have a way to identify the duplicates in our system, it is as important to have different ways to clean them up accordingly. So another option, one option here is to use a SQL query to mark the CIs and relationships. So using the same sample query as before, we can make a small modification and update the CIs and mark them for deletion or cleanup. In the sample scenario here, we created a new field. We call it a duplication keyword. And you can mark the CIs there by putting a string. So you can use multiple strings to mark, for example, different kind of duplicates. You can use reconciliation identity, ABDM, integration ID, etc. One thing of note here is that you can use Air Driver to execute a GL SQL command and not having the need to go to the database to execute the queries directly. Now take caution when executing update queries. Remember that it's always recommended to take a database backup before starting the cleanup activity. So now to delete the markets, the mark CIs, you, you have several options. If the amount of duplicates is small and you have the time and resources to check the data manually, it's a good idea to do a one by one deletion manually. This way you can verify the data before deleting. Another option is to set up an escalation that you can schedule or you can run on demand. In the slide here you have a sample action that you can use to delete instances. This escalation will run in the escalation queue in the background. So even yet a third option is to use the reconciliation engine itself and set up a delete job. And in this particular job you can configure a qualification set and make sure you delete only the entries which were marked previously. All of the above methods can benefit from a proper configuration of the cascade delete setting. Cascade delete is a feature of the CNDB that will make sure that when you delete an instance, it will also delete the children of the instance as well as the relationships between them. So you can configure this setting on a relationship class basis using the CNDB class manager. It is recommended that you set the cascade delete option for at least these two relationship classes, hosted access point and hosted system components. Once you finish with the process of cleanup and it's complete, you can revert the setting if needed. And you can check more on this feature in the official HMCV documentation. Now some extra steps. These steps, you can take them during the process or even after finishing the, the initial cleanup. So you can use the CMDB diag utility. This is a, a command prompt utility found under the CMDB SDK. This utility will help you run additional cleanup processes. It provides a very easy and fast way to clean up remaining orphan CIs and relationship. It can delete them or fix even orphan weak members. Also, you can determine which duplicate item to delete by looking at CI's asset management data. So most of the information is stored in IDSM forms and related to the CI by the use of the reconciliation identity. The list of forms here lists places where you can look for related data. The first created CI in the system will normally have the related information most of the cases. That it's often the case that the computer system which was added last will be the one which should be deleted. But this procedure above will help you validate that conclusion. So finally, a good 
post-mortem task is to identify what was the root cause of the duplicate. Was it a product issue? Was it a problem in the source discovery system? Bad configuration? You know, another possible reason could be the fact that identification rules are not good enough for a particular data or system. So if the data that is coming through the sources is not unique enough, we may need to add an additional attributes to the rules to make them unique. So here are some queries, sample queries, that when you run them, it can help identify potential problems in the data. So the first one here, for example, will reveal if you have computers that share the same host name, domain, serial number, token ID, and its virtual attributes. If you have data in this query, then you may need to consider adding even one more attribute to your computer system identification rules to make them unique enough. And the same mechanism can be applied to all the classes in the CDM. In the, in the CDM sorry. Each class will have different set of attributes which will make them unique. So the second query here will show you computers which main identification attributes are not populated. If none of these three attributes are populated, reconciliation engine is unlikely to find a match which, uh, with data populated by another data source. So you may want to consider why this is the case. Is the source maybe not being populated properly? So what else can we do to uniquely identify these computers? There's additional information on this topic available in the documentation page, including even additional queries and guidelines to further troubleshoot these issues. So troubleshooting, troubleshooting reconciliation job activities is, is mostly a matter of knowing how to interpret the errors and the data. So we have three levels of logging. Error logging will log detail messages for errors and warnings, which is the default value. Info we log class level details such as data set name and class name. And debug level, it will log trace messages, which are very useful for debugging errors. All these logging levels are inclusive of the preceding levels. So for example, if you set the logging level at debug, you will, you will receive log messages for error, info, and debug types. So you can specify the logging level for the log files from the modified server configuration window on the reconciliation engine console. Normally, reconciliation engine will only print error messages in the logs. That is the default setting. So if you want to gather more details for further troubleshooting, sometimes you may want to enable info or even debug logging. The recommendation in general is to use error logging in production unless required. Uh, info in QA and dev environments, and you can enable debug only when needed because of some issues that cannot be easily troubleshooted. So if you pick up any job in the console, you can see the name of the first and the last job log for that particular job run, which is very useful when you need to, to know which files to look into. The file names for reconciliation logs follow an any convention that includes the name of the job as well as a number that is incremented. You can use these logs to determine the reason for different, type of, different types of failures. Possible problems can be found at the job level. When this error happens, you normally cannot run the job successfully or it will abort in the middle. So a job will fail or abort only in cases where a fatal error occurs, in which case the log will contain the reason for the failure. So in cases where the error is not fatal, the job normally will continue to run for the rest of the data. Some common reasons here for, for these kind of errors are running out of disk space or running out of memory or even having a corruption in the CMDB or some part of the job definition. So another possible error is during the identification phase. Sometimes our CIs are not being identified and we need to know why. So you can search the job logs for the instance ID of the CI. If you identify the particular CI you search, you can search up and down using the thread ID of that log entry to determine what happened just before and after. So some things you can verify quickly are if the data set ID of the CI is impacting processing the job, double check the qualification group, 
that has been defined in the job and that the CI you want to process actually passes the qualification. Now, even if the CI passes all the quick checks from above, it may be that it fails to identify because of a multi-matcher. So a multi-matcher could be associated to duplicate data or it may indicate that we need better identification rules. So there are two different errors. It will indicate if the problem is in the source or the target. So the first error, data set ID and reconciliation identity combination is not unique, indicates that the CI was found a proper identification rule. It found a match in the target. And when it tried to copy the identification ID from the target into the source, it found that there was already another CI in the source with the same ID. So this error commonly occurs when you create a new CI to represent an object that was rediscovered rather than unmarking a subdivided CI. So LDM can cause this error if the CI H was taken on rediscovered, but it was never removed from the LDM dataset. So to resolve these type of errors, you can verify your data and you can remove or purge the old source CI to allow for the new CI to take its place. In some cases, you may want to review your discovery source and determine why the discovery software or the import tool is generating a new CI instead of updating the existing one. Now the second error found multiple matches in the data set indicates that while searching for a matching CI in the target, we found two or more CIs that match. So this can indicate that you have duplicated data or you need your identification rules to be more unique. The error here will display also the identification rule that caused the problem, making it very easy for us to find the problem. You can make a search for the duplicate CI in the target using the attribute values specified in the error. So for example, if the error was in the token ID rule that we show in the slide, you can make a search for all CIs in the target that have that particular token ID. You will find more than one, so you need to analyze the data to check if this is an actual duplicate or if it makes sense for your environment to have this type of scenario. So if the problem is not a duplicate, then you will need to re-examine the identification rule for token ID to modify the qualification that is specified so that it returns more unique CIs. Right? Make appropriate corrections to the qualifications and then you can rerun the job to identify these new instances. Okay, now let's talk about some performance considerations. First we have the database tweaks specific to your environment. So, reconciliation engine covers around 80, like we say, 80 to 90 percent of the use cases and environment configurations. But environment customizations may require specific tricks. So there is no magic potion here. We need to identify long-running queries. Um, is an index required, or would it be beneficial to add one? Uh, we have customers who complain about performance as being ideal. But in almost 90% of the cases, the performance issue was found in either bad data, database configuration, or, or bad indexing. So consider always using index for attributes that you use in identification rules. This will improve the performance of the identify activity. And also check that you're not taking any database backups happening at the same time that you run the reconciliation jobs or any other kind of database heavy activity at the same time. So all these needs to be considered from a database standpoint and you need to maintain often. So also one thing that can help here is to establish an integration server. If you have the possibility of having a server group, Try to dedicate one of these servers in the group to integration activities. That means all the data loading tools like a 2 integrator, the ADM synchronization process, etc., will be pointing to this particular server. Normalization and reconciliation should also run primarily on this server as well. In this way, the users will be using different servers and they will have reduced impact from the resources that we use. 
Also, keep your data clean and resolve problems impact subsequent jobs as well. So the CI is just going to identify or fail to reconcile or merge will be retried on each subsequent job that you run. So asking jobs taking an hour of close to an hour to process maybe two or ten CIs. Right? All the rest of the processing was spent on previously failed CIs. So the question is, why is my data getting dirty or how do I prevent that? How do I prevent the search? Right? So is your data getting properly identified? Maybe you need to change the identification rule, add a new one. Make sure reconciliation also is bringing only normalized CIs. It's a good practice to first run normalization on the sources and then bring the data once it's normalized to the target. Try to run purge jobs weekly also to remove all soft deleted data from the system. That will lower the CI count total, improving the performance of the whole. CMDB. Try to use qualifications when possible. Use them on identification activities. Use them on merge activities. I remember working on one environment where the product class had four million CIs, but the customer was not interested in this class at all. So we removed the class by restricting our reconciliation to qualifications, and we improved the running time of the total job by 400%. So remember to look always for good filtering opportunities. Understand the environment, what is needed, and then work to get that particular data only. This will make the jobs run faster, and at the same time you will have it much cleaner and more concise and production data. Merge algorithm. When performance is concerned, you can set the merge order in the merge activity by class in separate transactions. This is the fastest processing option. So if the job must run during production hours, you can use instead the within CIs in separate transactions option, which commits things like computer system and all the related components in one atomic transaction. So that means that a CI and all the relationships and children will be moved at the same time. It's a little bit slower but take but safer. And finally, fine-tune the thread, the thread numbers, and if needed, use the private queue when appropriate. So as we mentioned before, RE uses many resources, and these resources include remedy server threads. So if the thread count here is set too low, the ERC server will have low CPU use poor throughput and potentially poor response time under high loads. On the other hand, if you define too many threads, it may result in unnecessary thread administration. So suggested thread counts are three times the number of CPU for the Remedy Server fast queue and five times the number of CPUs for the Remedy Server least queue. So for example, a two CPU box may have six threads for fast and ten threads for list. Now, is there an upper limit? Well, the recommended maximum for any thread pool is never greater than 30. But note that all these are suggestions, and they should just serve as a good initial starting point. There's, there are too many variables here, different hardware, CPU architecture, CPU speed, etc. So we highly recommend that you take the time to benchmark the environment and try to figure out the optimum settings. Now, besides properly tuning the threads, we may run into the issue, especially in low-end servers, when running a reconciliation job impacts the user perception of the remedy system responses. Now, the reason for this is because our reconciliation job or jobs could be using all the threads available causing the end user's request to wait on queue for longer than normal amount of time. So in order to prevent this situation, we have the possibility of setting up a private queue for reconciliation requests. So that will free up the fast and the least queue from the Reddit server, making them once again available for the end users. Now performance is not only a reactive but also a proactive concern. 
So the following measure can be done regularly to, to determine and prevent possible performance issues in the reconciliation jobs. So even if your reconciliation engine jobs complete in a timely manner, you may want to run a performance analysis to determine if you need to adapt your configuration at the remedy server level or even at the database level. Now to run a performance analysis, you need to take API and SQL logs to a reconciliation job run. You can do this activity even in your QA or the development environment. Now, there's a tool, the AR Log Analyzer tool, that analyzes the AR system API and SQL logs that you've previously taken to determine performance bottlenecks and to help you with threat configuration issues. The documentation pages here explain how to install, use, and later on use the, the output to analyze the, um, the performance analysis. Now the output of the of this analysis can surface SQL query problems. It is wise to pick this up these query issues with a DBA to determine if maybe an index can be added. As mentioned before, most of the time adding a new index is the most easy and appropriate solution. Remember that indexes to the CMDB can and should be added through the CMDB class manager and other indexes you can add them through the AR system application in using the developer studio. Now if you have slowness in the API side, on the other hand, they normally indicate that you may need to revisit your thread and your performance configuration items of your remedy server. Sometimes the bottleneck in the API is caused because the AR server is stressed and you may need additional CPU or RAM to do the required work. Now, finally, remember how important indexing is when you have a database with large amount of data. So if you're adding, for example, a qualification to your reconciliation activities, try to monitor the job performance for the first time and make sure that the qualification is done on an index attribute. If in doubt, you can always check and confirm with the CMDB class manager, developer studio, or you can ask your DBA. So making a qualification on a non-index attribute will surely trigger a full table scan, which can really be a long time task for a database with a large CI count. The same will happen for identification rules. If you're creating a new identification rule for a class, ensure that the attribute you're using to match and compare is indexed as well. Otherwise, each CI that needs to be identified may also potentially trigger a full table scan to find the match. So sometimes it's better to create a new index, and sometimes it's better to add, add the attribute to the an existing index. So always consulting with the DBA is the best option. Finding the job one or two times and gathering performance information as mentioned before can lead to quick resolution and the best performance in the in the long run as well. <coughs> okay, so let's review the current state of the application right now. As of now, Reconciliation Engine latest version is 9.1 Service Pack 2. Uh, the Service Pack 2 can also be further patched by applying the patch 2 recently available. So BMT is now releasing regularly cumulative patches that include all the hotfixes to the current version. The installation of these patches is quick and it can be done with almost no downtime. It is highly recommended that you do so um, as soon as possible. Now, being on the latest version, it's very important not only to receive the latest features, but also to receive all the latest bug fixes. So in this latest service pack and patches, we can fix performance issues, duplicated issues, as well as high CPU problems and bad memory utilization. So to summarize, we have explained in detail the architecture of reconciliation, what is its main task. We have reviewed some of the main activities and the best practices around them. Finally, we talked about the most common issues, data duplication, performance, and we have given several options and troubleshooting techniques to analyze and resolve them quickly. Now, being on the latest version of the application with a good configuration, and the regular maintenance of the reconciliation engine, as well as Remedy and your database, will lead to having a healthy data set, clean, concise data, 
as well as great performance. Okay, Gregory, back to you. Great. Thank you, Gustavo. And at this time, we have some questions. Steve, uh, do you have your question list ready? Yep. Uh, we have several lined up. Uh, let's start off with the first question. Can we write an AI job to load the BMC core part, run reconciliation, check reconciliation status, and once this has completed, read the recon ID and update AST attributes record with the correct data? Hi. Yeah, so in fact, this is what is done by the um, UDM tool. So the DMT tool, the data management tool that comes with IDSM, actually have a, has a CMDB job that will help you load CIs in this fashion. It will load the CI data first, and then it will reconcile the data and uh, populate the AST attributes. You can use, if, if that particular job is not appropriate to your environment, or you want to customize it, you can use that job as a basis and uh, build a custom job. Great. Thank you. Uh, next question is, can I use SQL to change information in the database without causing problems on other forms? So, so yeah, what do you share? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yep. OK. Okay, so uh, I think I answered that question, but just to kind of make sure that everybody understands, uh, you know, there is a, I would say caveat, right? Whenever you make any change in an AR form at the backend table level, you are bypassing uh, uh, application layer. So whatever changes you are making, you sort of kind of responsible for that. However, whenever you're making change in one particular table, knowing that it represents only uh, one particular AR form, it's okay to do that, but again, Whenever you have any other operation or any other way to make that change, I would avoid directly going to the SQL. SQL is definitely an efficient way to do it, but again, there is a risk involved. So to be careful, I would say to be cautious uh, with that approach. Great, thank you. Uh, the next question is, can I force re-identification after recon ID has been assigned, but attributes used to determine it has changed? Oh, used to determine it changed. Yes, in fact, you can, the way to do that, the most common way to do that is to um, reset the identification, uh, the identification, um, sorry, the reconciliation identification key to zero in the source, and then you can run identification activity again. It will it will try to identify the CI again. Yes. Thank you. Uh, next question is, uh, we use Spoon to bring in LDAP people into the system. The data is in a staging form. When every, or I guess it's whenever the data is updated, it creates multiple updates in BMC person. Many times the people are duplicate CIs. For the most part, we have to delete people from BMC person. So I can take that question, uh, Steve and uh, so, um So when we are loading data through LDAP, right, um, there is, a, again, one out of bus integration as well, CTM people to BMC person. Um, so how you are loading the data, uh, I mean, that's uh, the area that you will have to check it out. With You are doing in a bulk load in CTM people. Uh, there is a way, um, I think, from the ITSM side, you can control how you want to uh, how you want to create two CIs in BMC person and how you want to process through reconciliation engine, whether you want to do it as a single CI trigger to reconciliation engine or you want to handle it as a kind of bulk operation. I would suggest go with the bulk operation most of the time when we do a data load in uh, CTM people, right? It happens in the bulk operation. You may want to do that, right, and turn on the configuration, um, which will do only the bulk operation. Uh, and uh, there is this uh, out-of-box recon job, which is sandbox bulk, uh, that you can run uh, once your data load is complete, so you can avoid any uh, data duplication or other um, issues. Okay, and here's actually a related question. Uh, where is the configuration for out-of-the-box people to person? 
Well, uh, I mean, we can include that. I don't have on top of my head, but uh, I have, we can certainly include as a part of our uh, published Q and A session. Okay, perfect. Um, I just have two more questions lined up, so this is a friendly reminder. If you have a question to ask, please go to the Q&A section of the webinar event, and we'll get those questions asked live. Uh, the next question is, in the presentation, you're referring to both AC81 and AC91 documentation. With an 81 installation, I guess maybe 8.1 uh, yeah. installation, does that mean that AC9.1 documentation um, I'm not sure how this, this question is kind of 8.1 installation. Does that mean that the AC 9.1 documentation it not are? I don't know what that means. <laughs> I apologize. So what I understood is, I mean, the, I think uh, whoever actually posted that question, uh, trying to make sure that uh, whatever the whatever the you know the documentation li link is provided, right? It's not specific to a certain information uh, versus other version, right? Uh, just to make sure, I mean, just to make it clear that AC81, which is 8.1 version, as well as 9.0 version, there is no major difference in the reconciliation architecture. I would say most of the changes that we have made is for the product improvement, right? So that applies actually to pretty much on a both versions. You will see improvement in the documentation in between these two versions to make it information much more clear and crisp uh, on particular use case or I would say scenario, but uh, otherwise there is no major change. Great, thank you. Uh, last question I have right now is, can data be pushed directly to the gold data set using Spoon? For example, if replicating reconciled data from one ITSM instance to another. Well, so, it can yeah, be it, done. But, yeah, definitely not recommended, but yeah, Manish, you can. No, absolutely. Uh, you said it right. Uh, it can be done. Again, anything, you can do it, but that's, I would say, a big no uh, from best, best, best practice point of view. Um, we, high, we do not recommend to go and load in BMC asset directly. Uh, there is a lot more data issues we kind of encounter when you go through that. Uh, keep reconciliation always uh, kind of, I would say, one way to load your data in BMC asset. Whether you make any manual changes or any uh, discovery sources, make sure you have it and have your data in. Even that's, uh, even if you go through the ITSM, if you make any change in your asset, right, we make a copy in a sandbox and go through the reconciliation to make sure we honor that particular change with the other discovery sources we have. So. I would say a big no for that. Yeah, I think just to complement that, so in this in, in this particular modification wouldn't be a source, maybe a source discovery, because you're you're maybe you want just to bulk modify data that is in the golden data. If you found something that you want to change, you wanna you don't wanna do one CI by one, you wanna make a bulk update. So in this case, particularly you could create a new data set, right? Uh, have the AI job modify the CIs, but instead of putting them in the golden copy, put them on the new data set, and then run a reconciliation job to merge that modification to the golden copy. Okay, great. Uh, next, I do have two more questions. Um, hopefully you can answer this next one. Uh, what is the name of the out-of-the-box UDM job that loads CIs and reconciles them? Is it a, oh, out of memory, it's CI-CMDV, I think, or CMDV-CI, Manish, maybe you remember. Uh, yeah, it, I think its name is CI-ITSM data or something like that. That's what I remember. Uh, but we can include that as a part of our QA, you know, published Q&A, um, you know, document. We can include that part. Yes. Perfect. Um, next question is, after I merge my attributes from data set A, they are kept in attribute data source list and cause errors if recon are uh, in recon if that a data set is not part of the merge precedent set. May I remove entries from attribute data source list manually? Well, definitely no. You should you shouldn't be manually modifying this this list, but. Um, I, I know the error you're referring to is not an actual error. What it's saying is that um, the data set is not there in the in the in the precedent set, so it doesn't know how to respond 
to the fact that the that the attribute was populated from the data set. So we have the CI in the target that was populated through different sources. And now we're trying to merge new data, but we don't know, reconciliation doesn't know um, how valuable is this data from the from the data set A, because you don't have it in the merge present set. So the best option is that you actually put include this data set in the merge present set and give it a value, right? If you don't want to do that, then you can run the job as assist. Even though you have the error, the data will be merged anyway. The only problem is this data set will not have any value at all. So that means that if new data is coming in in these attributes, they will be overridden. Okay? Thank you very much. And um, this will be, um, I don't have any other questions lined up at the moment, but uh, let's go ahead and consider this last call for questions, and, and we'll pause to allow you to go to the Q&A section and ask your question. Okay, I do have another question here. Uh, for compare activity, is there a quick way to only include attributes I am interested in? I recall it um, is just the opposite. I need to exclude all I do not want, which may be time consuming. Yeah, that's true. By default, compare activity will actually compare all the attributes, and you need to exclude the ones you, you don't want. Uh, we can definitely create an idea to see if we can um, continue this as, uh, as an announcement for, for maybe the future. Thank you. I, another one, another question just came in. If I create a new recon job, if I change the standard precedence rules within the merge activity, does this override the standard precedent precedence rules? Yes. Actually, any modification you do to the standard precedence rules, regardless if you do them from the standard precedence console or you do them from the job itself, it will modify the whole uh, the whole standard precedence rule. So it will any change you do in that job, it will affect the other jobs as well. Okay. Next question is: With the mandatory version on normalization, does that mean you need an unknown for a version for all things coming from discovery? Well, yeah, this, this is a little off topic, it's normalization, but I'm going to answer that. Um, version is, is not mandatory. I mean, this is something we can, we can talk on, a, on with support. But uh, it's not mandatory. We need to look at the specific use case you're trying to do. But um, by default, it's not mandatory. Now, if you have defined a version in the catalog, then your CIs will need to have a version. If they don't, then you need an unknown version in the in the product catalog. You need to specify that you are going to accept unknown versions in your catalog so that your CIs can be normalized properly. So it depends. By default, it's not mandatory, but if you define versions in the product catalog, then yes, you need to include the unknown versions if you also want to allow unknown versions. Great, thank you. So at this time, I don't have any other questions lined up. So Greg, I'm going to hand it back over to you. Uh, great, Steve. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for your participation in this uh, month's webinar. Uh, we have all the questions and answers will be posted, as uh, stated, with the final recording uh, within a week of today's presentation. And just to uh, refresh on the contacting BMC via the social uh, media channels, as well as the standard BMC technical support, website, phone number, and email. Um, at this time, just want to thank you for participating in this month's webinar.